In this series, we will dive into the awesome world of data and AI. We will show you how to unlock the secrets of public data sets, answer those burning questions that pop into your head just when you're chilling or walking down the street. In our first episode, we are hitting the streets of New York City, the ultimate commuter jungle. Imagine this, millions of people hustling to work every single day, three million squeeze into the subway, another one and a half million hop on buses, but a hundred thousand choose a way cooler option, city bikes. Is zipping around on two wheels really as awesome as it seems in this city? Let's find out together. I'm in Red Hook today, a neighborhood in Brooklyn that is famous for its winery, brewery, and cool cafes. It is also a popular spot for weekend getaways for some New Yorkers. But getting here is not always very easy with the regular public transportations like bus or subway. So I decided to take a city bike and ride here. But I haven't been able to park the bike yet and I'm just going to try another station. This is a famous problem across the city. Among many New Yorkers, finding a parking spot for their city bike is a big challenge. I'm going to meet Guillermo today, a New York City tech whiz who has been digging through the data to solve a problem that we all face on a daily basis the dreaded no parking situation. Can his data-driven solution revolutionize the way we use city bikes across the city? Let's find out. How's it going? How's it <laughs> nice going? to see you again. Nice to see you. Uh, thanks for meeting with us. So I see that you finally got to park your bike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, finally. <laughs> yeah, it took me a while also. I went to another station, was completely full. It mm -hmm. came here and luckily we could find the parking spot here. So does that um, happen often in Red Hook? Yeah, it happens a lot, especially in the weekends. Yes. So yeah, I mean, I was reading your very interesting article on Reddit and I noticed that there is a part that you actually compare weekdays and weekends. But what happened? Like, how did you come uh, with this idea to write the article about um, the city bike problems? Yeah, so often in the weekend, I go on a long run, but um, I don't want to run all the way back. So I like grab a city bike and then I have a really hard time to park here in Red Oak. And then I was talking to some other folks in the neighborhood uh, who have the same feeling that I have. Like there are no uh, places available, no docks in the weekend. So then I was thinking, hey, I have all this empirical evidence, but maybe I can use statistics to prove that this is really an issue uh, in Red Hook. So City Bike has an API, public API, and you can um, see the state of all the stations so you can see how many bikes are in a station how many open docks are in a station but that is just like a snapshot you know so i needed more than a snapshot i needed uh, like a time series database so i wrote my own s software to grab all this data from city bike and to and i put it all in in a, in a database we are now heading to guillermo's office to see what he has done and discuss his cool analysis. What were the main questions you were asking? What was the first question um, that came to your mind? <laughs> I sound like a nerd, but the first question was like, what is the duck to bike ratio? <laughs> <laughs> so can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, so if, if permanently 90% of the ducks in New York City are full, so there's a nine to 10 bike to dock ratio. 
then uh, we don't really have a problem in Red Hook. We have a city-wide problem. We just have too many bikes. So that, that was like kind of the first question that came up. <laughs> um, other questions that came up was, was like, is this a Red Hook specific problem? Do other neighborhoods also have the same problem? So the very first step is like up here where I'm looking at like, this is just summarizing the city-wide statistics. So. Uh, what are the total number of bikes in the city, which is like 35,000? Uh, how many regular bikes, how many e-bikes? I looked into e-bikes because one of my neighbors was complaining that he can never find an e-bike here. So I was like, let me just break that out. Um, and then I looked at like how many docks are broken, um, how many bikes are broken, how many docks are available. And then I found that citywide, the occupation rate is 44%, which means if the bikes are spread evenly, we should have um, plenty of parking here in Red Hook. We should always have half the dogs available. So th this is how I like proved like, okay, we have a problem in Red Hook. It's, it's, it's a Red Hook specific problem. So that's quite a low baseline. And then I started breaking that down further in like, what, what does it look like per day? And then what, what does it look like per hour? Can we take a look at that plot if you have it? Yeah, so here's the day, here are the days of the week. So we have a lot of docks available on, on Tuesday to Thursday. And then uh, starting Thursday, we see a big drop into Friday, Saturday, uh, Sunday and Monday. Let's break down like weekdays versus weekends. We need to like dive more into that, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's what this graph shows. So I can see that on Sundays, the available docks is at minimum. Mm -hmm. How many? We have like average of 10%. about 10%. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. And it's because Red Hook is a popular spot over the weekends. That was actually interesting. Uh, that's interesting that you say that because I had all these different hypotheses. So, because he talked to neighbors as well, right? So, and then we're like, maybe we don't have dogs because everyone's biking to the IKEA. And then someone else <laughs> is saying, like, well, we don't have dogs because everyone's going out to the winery and the breweries and then they're too drunk to drive back. So th there are all these different hypotheses from, from like people who live in Red Oak. So here, it, here it's actually interesting if you break it down uh, on for weekdays and for weekends, because then you really see like uh, here you see this bump that's like uh, morning commuters like leaving Red Hook. And here you see a bump that's people who live in Red Oak Day are leaving. So then, uh, and, and then you see the people coming back. So less docks available, um, which is just fun to see. Wow. So you had a very good hypothesis. You wanted to test it and you actually use data to test the hypothesis. And over the weekdays, you actually see um, a bump. Can you say again around what time? Yeah. So this is like 7 a.m. is when it starts to empty and then until like nine, when people just are commuting to work. Nice, and interesting. And then later on you see people from Red Hook leaving. So that's another bump. And then the morning computers come back at the end of the day. So that's uh, when it falls again. Very interesting. How does that look for the weekend then? The weekend is a, is a very different story uh, because we are kind of a beach town. So that's when everyone wants to go out here. So in the weekends, what you see is a big drop in available docks starting around lunchtime. And then when it's like 2 or 3 p.m., there's virtually no docks available in Red Hook. Okay. And is that, is that the valley we are seeing in that plot? In this plot, yeah, in this oh, big wow. drop. And it drops all the way to like about 6%. Yeah, that's a huge drop mm -hmm. because on average we had like about 16, 17 percent availability and then suddenly at 3 p.m. on Sundays we have about 6, 7 percent availability. Yeah. That's a big problem. Yeah, and then I started also thinking like what does that mean, you know, like 6 percent availability. What does it really mean from for like a user perspective of city bike user? And, and so then it became interesting to see like which percentage of all the docks only have like one open spot available you know because for me if there's like less than two open spots available or two or less i i just don't want to take the the chance you know so i wouldn't take a city bike to red hook so and you can actually see that on the app 
Uh, you can see it on the City Bike app, but I also wanted that in like a time series. I wanted to do some research around that and make some plots. So I, I made like these color uh, graphs in which you see the red dots on, on these plots show like the um, stations that have uh, two or less uh, open docks. And then you see that red hoop colors like all the way red in the weekend. And orange is like, uh, I believe two to two to six open docks. So uh, this is the average taken over the week, weekends and the weekdays. So green means plenty of docks. So you can see the, the weekdays, we have plenty of docks and then in the weekends it like drops like dramatically. So when you want to choose a station to actually park your bike, you look for the green circles and perhaps the orange circles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you go to the red dots, there's no, no empty spot, no available dock. And this is kind of a funny thing, by the way. If you do this kind of research, you um, learn uh, where to go. <laughs> so I know like there's so three docks that are usually have an open spot because I'm looking at statistics for months. So. <laughs> <laughs> After you do this uh, amazing analysis, which is really robust and has shown a lot of cool results, how would you interpret the results and how would you actually propose a solution? Yeah, I thought about that a lot. So what we need to do is we need either like a valet parking um, service in the weekends. And I've seen that in other neighborhoods, like when I used to work in, um, in Soho, um, they never had any open docks in the morning, so they just had a valet. So, you, so you, you give your bike to someone who works at City Bike. So we can't have that in the weekend, that would work. But what I've seen in like Mexico City, where they are using EcoBC, which is also run by Lyft, it's the same platform. What I've seen there is, every time a station is like almost full, uh, a fan shows up, they take the bikes out, and then there's open docks, and if a, a station is empty, they show up with with a bunch of bikes, fill it back up. So we can have some sort of rebalancing system like that. So you suggest if there is like a system that can um, monitor your kind of analysis and see where at each point we have um, available docks and how the distribution looks like over time, then people who actually come to collect bikes or redistribute them, they can e more easily decide where to go. And maybe there should be some automated system that tells them where to go now and where there is a higher need for the bikes. So then this will, will help us a lot to kind of have more availability for both the bikes and the um, spot for parking. Yeah, so I, I think in New York City, we should like kind of elevate what what city bike is. You know, it's part of public transportation, and that means we may have to put some money in it to like rebalance these bikes. And if you think about it, what does it cost? You know, to like drive a truck around town uh, compared to the benefits for um, the people living in a neighborhood. Um, I, th I think we should see it as like public transportation. Most of us encounter these types of problems on a daily basis and we maybe just um, complain about it or talk to our friends and family and we never take action on that. I'm very interested um, to see if you actually uh, quite often take action on from a scientific point of view and using your software development uh, skills and computer science skills to tackle some of these challenges. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just... I really like playing around with data and it's kind of a hobby. So here I, f I felt like I could do something for the community. These are amazing projects and it seems like you think about the problems, you take them seriously and you actually pose very good questions. And then you go collect data or find the data in open source uh, web pages like the New York Open Data. And then you kind of uh, try to do a smart analysis is a very scientific approach to problem solving and that's fascinating to me. What would be the next step if we really want to implement these types of solutions into um, the city or into the government or into different corporations that they can actually use um, the results of this? Do you have any ideas for what comes next? 
Yeah, I think we should uh, start a conversation with, with our representative and see if... Because who's going to own this? Who's going to own the rebalancing? Is it going to be a city bike, which is owned by Lyft? Or is it going to be the city? Uh, they kind of need to figure it out together on a high level. Um, but we need to at least make clear to our representative that this is a problem for us. So just to put it on the agenda. And then, um, yeah, hopefully they can figure out who owns it. Amazing. This is the power of citizen science. Guillermo used public data and data analysis techniques to propose a new solution to the problem he had faced in his neighborhood. Can you think of any problems in your own community? In our next episode, we will cover another cool example of how public data and data science tools can transform our communities in ways we never thought possible.